Good morning, Alfred Street. Good morning. My name is Danielle Howell, and I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. I would like to first thank God Almighty for, bl for blessing me with this opportunity to speak to you today. I would also like to thank my parents, grandparents, brother, and my sister in Christ, Ayanna Williams, for challenging me and being my foundation over the years. And thank you to the entire senior youth ministry and my beautiful church family and friends. You have all taught me so much. From the time that we are born, we are initially dependent on someone else. We are dependent on someone to feed us, clean us, and simply take care of us. At a certain point in our lives, we stop being dependent on others and we become more independent and are able to function on our own. However, in my junior year, I noticed that I continued to be very dependent on the people around me. I had attached myself to the people that I assumed would always be there for me. They became my sole support system. I began depending on them for everything, even my happiness. And I would feel empty if they didn't text me back or return my phone calls right away. I would go to these people with the littlest of problems, hoping that they had my answers. But, but that's what friends are for, right? It had gotten to a point where I had forgotten how to be my own person, and I couldn't really function on my own. See, church, sometimes God puts us into a fire on purpose, for a purpose. I'll say it again. God sometimes allows us to be put into a fire on purpose, for his purpose. The sole support system that I had created for myself was what I had become dependent on for my direction, happiness, and comfort. The supports, I'm sure that some of us can relate. The happiness in our lives becomes centered on our careers, our friends, our children, our boyfriends, girlfriends, husband, or wife. We give other people the power to control whether we're having a good day or a bad day. Well, eventually, my friends began to go off to college, and the acquaintances that I depended on moved on with their lives. The moment I began to lose those people, I started to see how much of a crutch my support system had truly become. I was not relying on God for my comfort and joy. During this time, I tried to hide my feelings of disappointment through a fake smile, but no one could tell that I would go home and cry myself to sleep. I felt like David when he said in Psalm 6 that he was weak and sick at heart. But David longed for refuge. And even though I sometimes felt alone, God was taking that moment to slowly refine me. He was taking me through a fire for his purpose, the purpose that he had for my life. I'm so glad that God started to refine my life. And I began to realize that I didn't need my friends to be my crutch. I didn't need to seek their approval for the decisions on my life. I had God. Once God began to clear my crutches away, I began to separate myself from things like laziness, not doing my homework, and influences that encourage me to make the wrong decisions. God made it easier for me to focus on my future by ridding me of the distractions that I place in my own life. Yeah. Alfred Street, when God places us in a fire, it is not for us to be burned, but to be purified. Yeah. Things are put into a fire to be refined, to be reformed, to be made anew. Psalms 51 verse 10 says, create in me a pure heart and renew a right spirit in me. You see, we need God to refine us. We need God to remove the people or the things that we have made crutches in our lives so that we can stand. And where do we stand? On his promises. I now stand on his promise, knowing that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You can stand on his promise that when you are weak, he is strong. And we can all stand on his promise. And we can all stand knowing that the Lord God is our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer. God is our rock and our salvation in whom we take refuge, our shield and the horn of our salvation, our stronghold. I praise God that he allowed my fire to have a purpose, and I stand here refined, reformed, and depending only on the Lord. Yeah. 
Good morning, Alpha Street. My name is William Aaron Jackson. Unlike the many speakers you will hear this morning, my fire was internal. My battle was learning to be obedient. Now, some of you with children, especially teenagers, may say that disobedience is a typical teen characteristic. We sometimes skip out on chores, miss curfew. We're always doing the one thing we are told not to do. Church, I had what I like to call a disorderly disobedience. At times, I would be disobedient to my parents, mentors, and even God. But I had to ask myself, what was there for me to gain in being disobedient? Was the feeling of instant gratification worth the possible repercussions? I can now answer that question simply with a resounding no. The Bible says in Exodus 20:12, honor thy father and thy mother so that you may live long in the land of the Lord your God. My struggle with obedience reminds me of Saul of Tarsus. Saul and I are not too different from each other. Now let me be clear. I do not go around torturing, tormenting, and persecuting people. You see, Saul had his moment of transition on the road to Damascus. It says in Acts 9, 4, he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? When Saul had his encounter with Jesus, he came to realization that what he was doing was wrong. Saul became Paul. Saul needed that moment, but sometimes we all need a moment in life where we can make a change in the direction we are going to go in. Like Saul, I had a moment of transition. Last year, my parents allowed me to stay in California for a few weeks. While I was there, I did the one thing they told me not to do. I had my ears pierced. <laughs> <laughs> now for some, this might not be a really big deal, but in my house, this was huge. I had, asked to get, I had asked for permission to get my ears pierced before, but my parents had already told me no. The problem was that once again, I was stressed to behave, and I chose to do the exact opposite. When I came home from California, I could tell my parents were upset. At first, they did not talk to me about the issue, which was not like them at all. In my house, communication is very important. <laughs> I could fear their disappointment. I was ashamed of myself for not listening and once again being disobedient. Finally, one day my parents decided to break the ice and sit down and pray with me. This is when my transition came. I was tired of seeing my parents upset. If anything, I should be striving to make them proud at all times. Yes, we all make mistakes, but there's a point where you have to make a decision in the direction you're going to go in. Either you're going to be disorderly, disobedient, or respectfully righteous. Thank goodness I have a mom and dad who are not afraid to pray with me and for me. I think we all can be thankful for a praying mother, grandfather, father, or grandmother. My transition to respectful righteousness was not only a change within, but a change reflected in my life as well. You can have this change too, if you allow Jesus to change your life. Now church, I will leave you with this. I played football at South County High School, and sometimes when I'm on the field, the quarterback will call an audible, black 80, black 80, black 80, black 80, set, set, to change the play. Sometimes we need to change the play in our lives. Jesus is my quarterback, and he called an audible on my life. He knew that if I continued down the path of disorderly disobedience, the devil was going to do everything he could to destroy my future. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Alfred Street, leave your disorderly disobedience in the past and walk with Christ in respect for righteousness. I would like to thank my mom, dad, and brother for all your love and prayers. Also, thank you to Mr. V and Miss Elisa and you, Alfred Street, for allowing me to stand before you today. Thank you. Good morning, Alfred Street. Good morning. My name is Raven Balding. I am a graduating senior at St. Stephen's and St. Agnes School. I would like to speak on the topic of excellence and leadership. When I think of excellence, I think of being the absolute best person you can be for God. Since my last birthday in March, I've done a lot of thinking about the kind of person I want to be. 
But more importantly, I thought of who God wants me to be. And I know that God has called me to be a leader. I found it hard to emerge as a leader when I am being lazy or if I am around others who are not excelling. In the book of Joshua, it tells the story of how Joshua was installed into leadership over the children of Israel. Imagine having to lead over all the Israelites after Moses. But the Lord gave Joshua some of the best advice any new leader could have. Be strong and very courageous. In that short but powerful statement, God was prepping Joshua for the many fires he would soon face. One of Joshua's fires is when he had to lead, lead the children of Israel across the Jordan River. Then he led them in conquering the enormous wall in the Battle of Jericho. And let's not forget the battle with the Amorites where God made the sun and moon stand still. Anyone who knows me well knows that I love the sport of track and field. I have run all four years of high school, and despite the challenging and tiring practices, losing a few races, and a few minor injuries, I have loved every minute of it. This year, as a senior, my coach made me a captain. At first, I didn't take being a captain seriously, but as weeks went by, I realized that my younger teammates really do look up to me I had to lead by example if I wanted my whole team to excel. Just like Joshua, I had to have courage. I had to be strong and courageous to lead my team through a great season. To me, being an excellent leader is trusting God and giving him my best. But what happens when you're not at your best? What do you do when you've given your all and still come up short? This is when you need to take the time to have a talk with God. God to, can speak to you and encourage you in a way that no one else can. As you run the races in your life, no matter how hard they may be, God will run right beside you. When you trust him, God will help you lead in excellence. The Bible says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So I encourage you today to stay focused on him and to be strong and very courageous as you lead. I would like to thank my parents for always loving and supporting me. And I would like to thank Pastor Wesley and all of my church family for allowing me to speak today. Thank you. Good morning, Alfred Street. Good morning. I am Kayla Simmons, and I choose to walk through the fire. And when I walk through the fire, I shall not be burned. Well. Alfred Street, I have encountered many fires along my journey. Some fires I did not even realize I was in, and some fires I put myself in. Well. Church, have you ever seen the fire before you and decided to walk through it? Maybe God is calling you to get out of a relationship. Maybe God is calling you to change careers. Maybe God is calling you to forgive. What fire is God calling you to walk through with him? Through my journey, God has helped me realize that every human being has their own unique fire that they might have to walk through. These fires are sometimes defined by experience, and colored by emotions. God gives us the strength daily so that we will endure any obstacles that attempt to deter us from our goals. Each time we may be tested by people who intend to distract or discourage us, we have a choice when that fire comes. I choose to walk boldly through the fire. God reminds us in Isaiah 43 verse two that he will be with you. In high school, I encountered a situation when my fire became very much defined. My teacher surprised me by comparing my lifelong dream of becoming an actress to being a clumsy marathon runner. According to her, if a clumsy runner wanted to run cross country but kept falling and not doing well, something was wrong and that runner needed to choose another sport. In that moment, my teacher was telling me to give up on my dream of becoming an actress. 
I expected my teacher to offer me support and not discouragement and achieving my goals. However, my teacher's doubts have only fueled my desire to achieve and reminded me that God is the only supporter I need. I've continued to dance, sing, and act. Despite the discouraging words, I choose to walk boldly into my fire and into my future of becoming an actress. As an aspiring actress, I use my talents of speaking to start theater groups for teen, young teens where they too can learn to be encouraged to use their voice in performing arts. Alpha Street. I'm here to tell you that I am a fire walker. I choose to walk boldly for Jesus and the way I act, walk, and talk. Give it him. Give him the glory and honor and all that I do. So when I'm walking through my fire, I can say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. When I'm walking through my fire, I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When I'm walking through my fire, the Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I should fear no evil, for God is with me. So church, when you are encountering your life's fires, I encourage you to walk boldly, confidently, and with certainty that God will be with you. I would like to thank my mother, Alpha Street, the Tutorial Ministry, and my families and friends. I am also proud to say that I will be attending Kalamazoo College next fall. Good morning, Galford Street. My name is Edmund Hammond. Isaiah 43 says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. You see, I'm formed, I'm redeemed, and I shall not be burned. So when your life seems to be in a mess, know that God is ready and has the plan to fix your broken pieces. Growing up, everything in my life was going well, but a situation occurred that impacted my life forever. When I was eight years old, my parents divorced. I was emotionally hurt, and I felt as if I had no one to lean on. So I asked God, why would this situation happen to my family and me? Not being able to see my dad every day changed our relationship a lot. I began to pray every night, asking for my parents to be together again, but it seemed as if that wasn't going to happen. I began to wonder if God really exists. In my time of trouble, I felt that God hadn't abandoned me and wasn't going to answer my prayers. I felt like I was battling my way through my fire, trying to survive, but not knowing how. It's crazy how sometimes when we think things are falling apart, they may actually be falling into place. I don't think y'all heard me. When we think things are falling apart, they may actually be falling into place. Romans 8.28 says, For all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Again, sometimes when you think things are falling apart, they may actually be falling into place. Let me tell you, when you see tragedy, God sees opportunity. When you see adversity, God sees prosperity. When you see hopelessness, God sees your future with promise. While my parents didn't reconcile their marriage, and I felt like I was going through one of the hardest times in my life, God was putting his bigger plan into place. He began to put great role models in my life to help direct me to become a better man in Christ. Yeah. 
I knew that God had taken the shambles off in my life and started mending my broken pieces for a brighter future. Everyone goes through a test or situation in life where your faith in God may be tested, but we must be confident and know that we walk by faith and not by sight. My faith was tested through the situation in life. However, I learned that it's important to keep your eyes on God because he will take care of every one of your pieces in life. God will protect you in your fire, and God can do the impossible for you. No matter the tragedy, no matter the adversity, no matter the hopelessness, God can and he will take care of you. Thank you. Good morning, Alfred Street. Good morning. My name is Candace Freeman. I am a graduating senior at Friendly High School. There are many fires that teenagers face on a daily basis. One that has been prevalent in my life is my internal battle of not being good enough. Over time, I became a people pleaser. I wanted to feel accepted, loved, and not forgotten. I believe the root of this fire was my strained relationship with my father. I used to think of myself as a burden to my father. I felt as if I was not good enough. Ultimately, my mother relocated from South Carolina to Fort Washington, Maryland. Regardless of my move, I continued to struggle and lost my faith in God to see me through and I wonder if God, like my father, had forgotten about me too. After I moved to Maryland, I was invited to attend Alfred Street for a youth group lock-in. While I was there, we were given personal time to pray. I hadn't really spoken to God in a while, so I had a lot to tell him. <laughs> in my prayer, I felt something that night. I was holding in so much pain. I cried out to God asking, why am I not good enough? But over the next couple of months, God showed me that I was always good enough and I am very much loved. I was searching for my happiness in other people instead of having faith in him. You see, Alfred Street, I realized I needed to build my faith in God. I like to compare this to the way I make shepherd's pie. Yes, church, I can cook. For those of you who aren't aware of what shepherd's pie is, it's a full meal all in one pan. It starts with the base layer, typically of a ground meat. Then you add several layers of vegetables, mashed potatoes, and add a little cheese on top. Pop it in the oven, and there you have it. Well, today at Alfred Street, I'm going to give you an even better recipe. A recipe to have stronger faith. We are making a faith pie. Our base for this pie is prayer. Matthew 21, 22 tells us, if you believe, you will receive whatever you have or ask for in prayer. We must pray fervently and without ceasing. Prayer is our way to communicate with God. The next layer is vision. When I make my shepherd's pie, the vegetables are hidden, but I know they are there because I put them there. Hebrews 11, 1 tells us, faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. We may not be able to see God, but I know he is faithful because I accepted Jesus into my life. And he has brought me through my many, many fires. So we have prayer and vision. The last thing is work. Yes, church, we're going to put in some work. We have all heard faith without works is dead. But what work? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. We have to study our word, live it, breathe it, and know it. We need to know who God is. How can you pray for God to deliver you from your trials and tribulations when you don't trust him? How do you have vision that God will see you through when you are not honest about the fire you are in? And because you have not put in work to know him, it is hard to trust that by no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It is hard to trust that by his stripes you are healed. It is hard to trust that when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. The same way I make my shepherd's pie and excites the palate of any person, the recipe for faith is the excites the palate of the spiritual palate. 
Let me say that one more time. The same way my shepherd's pie excites the palate of the person, my recipe for faith is used to excite our spiritual palate. I don't know about you, Alpha Street, but I get excited when I think about my faith in God and what it has done for me. Now, maybe we cannot actually eat the faith pie, but this recipe will provide you with sustenance that is everlasting. I'd like to say thank you from, to my mother for staying strong and raising me for 17 years. I'd like to say thank you to you, Alpha Street, for the support and love that you have shown me throughout the years. I will never doubt the Lord again because I know he is mighty and able. Have faith in God, remember the recipe of faith, and do not give up on God no matter your fire.